afternoon, everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Afternoon Drive Home on IC in Christ Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications, as well as Abundance TV, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got an awesome guest with me right now. Her name is Lisa Daggs. Lisa, hello. Hello. Good morning from Nashville, Tennessee, everybody. I love the background. So, yeah, what's behind you? That is Nashville. That is Nashville. So, I love it. Yeah, I've been there several times. I was with the company, and their headquarters was in Nashville. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a fun place. It absolutely is. So, let's talk about your music because we we air your music here at this station, by the way. Go to the website, icradio.media. You'll find the um, icons that say listen live, or you can request music. Go ahead and download all those, the apps and everything. They're all free. So go ahead and download it and just type in Lisa's name and request some music. Lisa, that would be, I'd love that. That would be my Christmas present from you to me. <laughs> Lately, because you know something, our listeners are the boss of us and they tell us what to play. Mm hmm. It should be what they want to hear, you know, mm -hmm. and if they're going to be, I feel if they're going to be um, um, supporting you by listening to you and they should have a say in what they love to hear. So I'm with you all the way on that. I totally agree with that. It's 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So how long have you been singing? Mm, my first solo, I was three and I was in Merced, California and they pushed the piano bench up to the pulpit mic and i sang a song called i love to go to sunday school and i had my hand on my hip and i was pointing to him you know <laughs> well so it was about being in church and loving people and uh, so the lord is accounting on lord is accounting lord is accounting on you <laughs> at the end you know so i thought i was a little bossy miss three yeah, years ago i'm into it <laughs> yeah, been a little bossy ever since, but I try to be careful with that. that, that that's cool. Yeah. So we all want it our way if we're really honest. Come on, y'all. Yeah, come on. Yeah, let's get real here. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I like. So, what's your biggest influence in music? What's that, babe? So, what is your, who was your biggest influence? Um, Back in the day when I had, um, I had a microphone and a cord and, I was in one of the bedrooms. I was raised in Hollywood, California, and I lived in Sacramento for a good portion of my life, moving back and forth to Nashville and then ending up. So I moved back and forth three times and I ended up here. I have a 23, almost 22 year old daughter and she's my only. But back in the day, you know, I did the hairbrush thing too. <laughs> You know, singing the hairbrush and had all my moves down. I, but I, had, a, I had a huge uh, cabinet which had these great speakers in it, and I would put Linda Ronstadt on, and I would put um, Bonnie Raitt on, and I loved my. I have a brother who was 10 years older than I am. We can talk about addictions later if you'd like, um, because my family was riddled with them. But he i would sit in front of him and just like this y'all <laughs> because he had the most beautiful view the uh, the most beautiful voice kind of smooth like merle haggard yet um just very um real you know and i loved i loved um you know, he was in a band, an all boy band, and they would sing all over the places. And girls would stop me while I was riding my Schwinn bicycle and stop me like a stalker and say, Are you Larry Dagg's sister? You know, and I'm like, Yeah. yeah I'm not very, of my brother. Yeah, a very handsome guy, but I'm like, You know, you're scaring the daylights out of me. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, but he, um, it was four years ago and he um he was a heroin addict um younger in life and drinking and you know smoking and doing the things that a lot of us do to try to feel try to take the pain away 
from trauma or whatever we've experienced in life. And when we taste it, it does take it away for a second <laughs> or for five years. But there's always a price to pay. And I had to help him die four years ago. And, and he didn't have to because there was a cure at that time. But my love for music really came. My dad, um, I don't, I'm country, popping, rocking, bluesy, whatever I feel like singing kind of girl. That's and the best. Because, I, because I mean, it, you know, sometimes you're a little country and sometimes you're a little rock and roll, so. You know, and and people really don't know where to put me, Donna, because it's like, where does she fit? <laughs> and and that's okay because I've come to a place place in my life where I, I do what I want to do. I do what I love to do. I do what stirs my heart. If it doesn't stir my heart, how's it going to, you know, stir there? So I do I do what I want to do, and I've got a brand new my tenth CD coming out called "You Are Enough," and then I've got this great CD that I wish you all would get. It's called Let me see if I can get it in front of me. In front of me. it's called Christmas from My Heart, and on the back is this fun cover and um i'll sell it to you real cheap um for a few more days we'll do the black friday the cyber monday the before christmas but it's a really fun cd so what what really turned me on to music um in california you know we were listening to the rat pack and we were listening to dusty springfield and and then the whole maranatha thing came out out there and then I end up with Gaither, and I'm going, what is that What is that picnic song they're singing that is so fast? And I don't even know what the words are. <laughs> but I got, to, I got to learn those, and they saw, they loved me and saw, um, he, Bill Gaither told me he loved my spirit, you know, and, and I don't really think, Donna, that there's a greater compliment than that. I think so, too, but let me ask you a question. Yeah, okay. you could sing anything you wanted to, really. I mean, you know, you could, you know, go out and sing it all. But why did you choose Christian music? Well, I didn't at first. I had an all-girl band. Well, okay. Raised in the church, accepted Christ when I was young, um, went through grade school, junior high, you know, boys start mm, turning your head, had a horse, took care of him, never owned a saddle. Um, and then I wanted to go to college and become a phys ed major and a minor in voice because I danced for six years in dance and composition, dance and production, you know, jazz, um, just choreography um i loved the stage and um then you know my mom and dad divorced when i was 10 and it was devastating divorce is devastating especially for the children very traumatic depending on the one who was cheated on <laughs> and um I started singing in Lake Tahoe. So I sang in an all girl band. And then I was no longer with that band and started my own band called Lisa Daggs with the Touch of Class. And so we sang um, Top 40, Stevie Winwood, uh, Winona. So we did country, pop, Top 40, rock, um, everything. You know, we'd have four 45 minute sets. And sometimes those would be from 11 to 3. 11 p.m. till 3 in the morning, <laughs> you know, and drugs and alcohol became a huge part of my life. So I, I started selling to support a habit, making money on the side, and it kicked my tail. And all of a sudden I was facing three to five in prison. I knew where I came from, which was the church and Christ, and I knew all through my using Donna and my running that Jesus was the answer. But I, I wanted to do what I was doing and the flesh kicked in and 
I was pleasing myself until I got arrested for the last time, which was four times I was arrested. And all of a sudden I was facing three to five in prison. And I had a long talk with Jesus. I was going over to sing to the military men during the the Christmas holidays during a Department of Defense tour. And I was, I had a thousand dollars a day rock cocaine habit. And I had been up for 10, the last arrest, I'd been up for 10 days with no food, just alcohol and smoking rock. My hair was up to here <laughs> as we had it. Mine it was, was too. you remember, remember big hair and it, I was kind of gray. I'm not now. Um, my hair was breaking off. I was dying. And, um, that was the last time I was arrested. And I had a talk with Jesus while I was in the cell. And I said, Lord God, I've said this before. I'm so scared. And it, I don't know how I got here. And it's like the quiet voice of the Lord said, compromise. Because of your compromise, these are your consequences. And I said, Lord, if you get me out of this mess this time, I promise I will never, ever quit telling people what you've done for me. That was November 11th, 1989. And here we are getting ready to record my 10th CD. And I had an opportunity to join with a redhead and a brunette uh, right before she Daisy came out and the Dixie Chicks. And the guy who, um, can't think of his name right now, I apologize to him, who uh, produced the whole, who's bad, heavy boots been under, you know, Shania. And they said, we could really do this. This blonde, redhead brunette, let's take you on the road. And I was a Christian living in Nashville at the time. And I said, will I have an opportunity even for a few sentences to share that I'm clean and sober and that God is my strength. And I said, no, I don't think that's gonna work. And I said, you know what? I made a promise I need to keep. So I have walked away from several that could have been household name Lisa Daggs everywhere, but then I would have compromised once again. So that's, that's the long story in that's, 33 years of sobriety in three minutes. <laughs> That's why I do songs about the Lord, songs that have life, songs that are story songs that people can relate to. People like that. And they also like, I, I know I do too, real people, you know, where you find out where they've been and how they wound up here, but you, you hit upon a few key issues. And part of those is whatever we do as a parent, you know, you think, oh, I'm doing it for me. It's the best thing for me. And it winds up not being the best thing for you uh, or your kids. Um, my parents divorced too. My dad was a minister and things happened and he divorced. And I was 25 years old. It hit me like a ton of bricks too. It'll hurt, didn't it? And it will. It will. But we can also make decisions not based on what other people do. And sometimes we can kind of get right. in that, you know. I know yeah. I have. I mean, everybody has, and but it's up to us to kind of turn things around. So you mentioned a few key points there. You mentioned a lot of really awesome key points for people who get into bad situations because they kind of got led into that situation, and and it's happening. The economy. I mean, gas prices. My goodness, how much is gas where you live? How much are we going to have to hear about COVID anymore? Either. Yeah, I don't and, want to hear I, anymore. and what I heard yesterday from a from a store manager. Uh, a lot of these things that we've had to do because of COVID, we're finding that we kind of like it this way. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so, I don't either. So, I don't either. I think it was a way to kind of, and especially in churches, but you know, churches found a way. They started doing Facebook Live and all this stuff, and then we're being shared. Yeah. But yeah. That's, that's the thing about Christians. Christians are resilient. Yes, we are. Everyone's looking for something else. When other people give up, we don't. But you can get discouraged. Yes. So yes. what do we do? Because wintertime is coming on. Now there's a flu. Now there's this. Now there's that. There's always going to be something. So 
why can't we do, what can you do, what can I do to keep a bright spot, a bright light in somebody's life? Because I'm telling you, if you listen to the news all day, depression. <laughs> it says it can. Like, depression and then anger. And then I think I'm going to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. But I'm like, oh, so what it's do you do? so clear. What do I do? Uh -huh. Put on worship music. Put it on in your house. Put it on instrumental. Put on Lisa Dagg's music. Um, I don't suggest some of my faster songs while you're driving because yeah. I myself and a couple of others have gotten speeding tickets. <laughs> yeah. And I all of a sudden you're getting in a song and you're and that right foot on that pedal, you know, that vertical pedal goes down and down and down. And you're like, Whoa! Woo! You're partying in your car and woo, 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 and that's no fun. I was on my way I to know, see. I know that light comes on. It's not, Lisa, we've got to go into a commercial break. We'll be okay. Right, we'll be you right go right there. there. All right. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Okay. Twin City Used Car Sales has been serving drivers in the Northeast Alabama area for years with a quality selection of late model used cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks. On top of our extensive selection and competitive prices, we offer professional auto financing services for used car buyers of all credit levels. Whether you've just begun your search or you're ready to secure your next vehicle, at Twin City Used Car Sales, you will drive away with the vehicle of your dreams. The sales and finance staff at Twin City Used Car Sales look forward to serving you. And you can apply for financing online before your visit to our used dealership in Fort Payne and Gadsden, Alabama. Check us out on the web at TwinCityUsedCars.com or go by the locations in Fort Payne and Gadsden. We sincerely look forward to serving you. Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mintone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all. Enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience Southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256 634 2018. Patterson's Music and Jewelry is a full line music store offering guitar repair, setup and sound installation equipment, as well as instrument rentals and new and used guitars and amps. We offer jewelry at affordable prices and jewelry repair, watch batteries and link removal, and we offer personalized jewelry such as fingerprint, mother's rings, and pendants. Shop in historic downtown Fort Payne on Galt Avenue. Hours are 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and 9 to 2 on Saturday. Call 256-845-4115. That's 256-845-4115. And thank you for trusting Patterson's Music and Jewelry. Hi, this is Donna Thiesel. I am your host of Afternoon Drive. Don't you just dig that music? I love the background music at Patterson Music and Jewelry. I think it's really cool. And they're really, really good, cool business people to do business with as well. I care about you. I really do care about the customer. And uh, so those are really, really awesome folks. I do have one of with me right now. She's about to come right back in. And um, as soon as we get here, I've got to ask her a question about... Lisa, do you play, or do you have musical instruments? Do you play musical instruments as well as sing? Well, I could take my my phone down there and show you all of them. I 
I do have um, some great endorsements with Epiphone and Sure, Ernie Ball. Um, I used to have one with Wrangler a long time ago. I have six guitars and I used to play a lot of rhythm and some of my, my singing has gotten very intricate and um, it's not easy to sing. It's not, it's not, um, it's not boring. <laughs> So my husband says, honey, you don't have to play, but I'm starting to think about the talents, you know, the 10 talents. And I have six guitars that were given to me from Epiphone, beautiful electric and some others that are, um, and I, then I have a Taylor. I have, Taylor gave me a great deal as well. My husband has a nicer one. He's a better player. He deserves it. He's a great singer, y'all. He's more Southern gospel and we work well together. And you heard my story of thousand dollars a day in rock cocaine. And my husband has never even had a, not even a smoke off a cigarette wow. and anything else that would be worse than that. Nothing, nada. And then there's us that fit together so beautifully. Um, so we have a lot of instruments. Um, I'm not willing to sell them yet because um, this is just so real and almost stupid, but I'm going to say it anyway. I just had my nails done. Okay, I always have them done French, except for one time of the year when I get the real, you know, sparkly cranberry, right? So these four will be getting cut short, these four, after the first of the year, because I promised the Lord that I am going to go down there and I am going to rehone my skills and um, be able to just take a guitar somewhere and be able to just minister. So I'm going to pick them back up again, folks, and you can hold me accountable. Say so you can email me Lisa at lisadags.net and just say, "Hey, did you did you practice today?" <laughs> we'll do. It. You do the same thing for me. We'll just uh, balance each other out. How about okay. That? Are you also a songwriter? Very much so. Um, I usually write about. I only did one on the Christmas album because this is Christmas from my heart, so I did all my favorites. What is so super fun about this? I think you all know, all, all your listeners know what nuances are, right? So so there's all these little surprises of other songs and and it's just so fun. And then we go through a 40s version and then I sing a song at the end that I wrote called He's Not a Baby Anymore. So it can all be fun and joyful and then it's like, boom, this is the reason of Christmas. And then on uh, The Only Truth I Know, I think I, I wrote nine out of the 12 um my very first one i i didn't re write any of these because i was just starting about five <laughs> look at me oh, about five or six on all these cities <laughs> and uh there's one more over here i'm just showing you this because i think it's super funny i can barely hold how many i have love you to buy them i've got a big bundle where i think you could get all of them all of them for 50 bucks um and then this how do is okay, how can folks buy okay how can they find your music again at lisa dags music um just a little at sign lisa dags music facebook instagram uh, i have four facebook pages there's a personal Lisa Daggs, which only allows you the 5,000. Lisa Daggs, uh, at Lisa Daggs Music, we have over 25,000 viewer um, people. And then I have um, a page called Reality Check because I was on The Fish through Salem Media Group for five years where I had a show that was called Reality Check Recovery Talk on the radio for one hour. Uh, Connie Selica, you probably heard of her. She had that slot and they gave it to me and I interviewed people. I had my own show, Donna, and interviewed people about what their life was like, what happened and what it's like now. And in between those five minute segments, we'd play one or two songs that would push that spoken word deeper into the marrow of the bone. I'd have to write the show, which you know how that is. 
you have a timeline, <laughs> a timesheet where you've got to get out at a certain time. You've got to get your sponsors in and, and you have to do a hook to keep the people there. So they'll stay tuned in. So it was a lot of work, but we had 27 countries that downloaded it. And we had 47 states that downloaded the show. And I was told by um, their program director who had been there for 40 years that at Salem Media Group at The Fish, during that seven o'clock Sunday night hour, their listening audience would double for that hour and then it'd go back to what they had. So it was very um, helpful to people. We're not all that different. We aren't all that different. Um, we're mostly all insecure. And the song everybody that I wrote. some kind of a hang up, don't you think? I mean, everybody does. Why do we feel that way? What I found, what I found in this show, which was the major uh, um, similarity was why am I not enough? Why am I not enough that my dad didn't stay when I was 10? The only girl, the baby girl, I don't remember sitting on his lap. Why, why someone else would say, why wasn't I enough that my parents didn't turn me out to do tricks? Why wasn't I enough that that boy did what he did to me in the woods? Mm -hmm. You know, that boy did to the boy in the woods. Um, just broken stories of why, why am I enough? So we wrote a song, which is the new CD. It's, uh, I'll just, I'm just going to speak it to you. And I hope, I hope this really hits your heart, who you are. They don't know just who you are. They see the lines, the tracks, the scars, but that won't tell them who you are. You've walked through pain. Don't you know you're more than shame? God sees you and he knows your name. He made you just the way you are. And you're stronger than you know. You're weaker than you show. You struggle to be loved, but you've always been enough. Perfect lady in the pew, everyone looks up to you. But they don't hear your secret tears. You cry when no one else is near. Hasn't it become too hard? Always keeping up your guard. You hide away your broken heart from those who love you as you are. You're stronger than you know. You're weaker than you show. You struggle to be tough, but you've always been enough. We're all unique, perfectly broken, forgiven and redeemed. We are fierce. We are survivors. The same cross made us free. And you're stronger than you know and weaker than you show. That's a pretty, that's a, you know, there's a word called redemption that I really love. Less than a minute, by the way. Can you believe this? Time flew by. So there's a word called redemption, and I love that word. What is your one word you would like to share with everybody within the next 30 seconds? Recovery is possible. <laughs> that's not the one word. If you hashtag it, it is. Okay. What would be the one word? Surrender. Mm -hmm. That's a fantastic word. It says it everything. That's Surrender. Cool. We got to go, Lisa. Okay, we do this. <laughs> so pry your purple knuckled fingers open and let God do what he wants to do in your life. Surrender. Michelle, that's it. Lisa, thank you so much for being on the show today. You're awesome. Thank you, Donna. It's and my I'm pleasure. Looking to more, I'm looking forward to more interviews, okay? Okay, let's do this. Absolutely. God bless you. Thank you for having me on. I want to thank Sandy Marie Promotions for sending you my things, and that's how we got introduced. Absolutely. So thank you. Absolutely. God bless you. We're seeing you later, and you okay. will. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with another awesome guest. Mm -hmm.